Hi, so I'm going to talk to you about uh, cross rhythms, uh, specifically about threes against fours as they appear in Chopin's Fantasy Impromptu, which is a very specific form of, of this cross rhythm. So if I'm teaching people to do a three against four cross rhythm in the normal way, in a you know, more, more sort of you know, slower tempo and a little bit more uh, sort of rhythmically stable rather than this agitato style, which I'm going to talk about in a minute, I would teach them to, to do the combined rhythm. So something like this. That's a three against four, and you can hear the combined rhythm. Da, 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 da. This is obviously too fast for that. You couldn't, you know, if you're playing something that was slow, you could definitely use that approach. But this this piece, the fantasy impromptu, is quick. Now it's very interesting this kind of agi agitato, agitated style, um, and you get it quite a lot in Chopin. And it's often has this kind of figuration that you got here in the in the left hand, where it, it does these these sixes, these triplets going up and then back down again on another triplet. So it's a, it's a it's not in time. You couldn't possibly play like 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 a metronome. It would sound pretty terrible and be kind of unplayable. Some of the the jumps down need time. So it's da 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 di da 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 di da 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 di da 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 di da da. So it kind of speeds up through through the arc of 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 the six of the six notes. So it's almost like it's like da 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 da. Yeah, it's almost like a quaver and two semiquavers. Da da da, followed by two semiquavers and a quaver. Da da da. If I play that more in time. But kind of stretched. So it's like the obviously it starts slower and speeds up. And then slows down, but you don't want to, to um, ultimately play it like that. But it's a, often a useful when I'm teaching this piece or pieces like this that have this this kind of rhythm. It's a useful way to 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 kind of get the hands working together, which is what it's all about. So if you think of it as da 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 da. Do it really slowly so you can hear it. But obviously we want this which this sort of agitato feeling to to be more, you know, that's just rhythmic and in time. So that stretching, that kind of pulling, da 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 di da 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 di da da da, is what creates it. To kind of iron out the the the, the left hand triplets or sixes, you can feel as if you're splitting between the. the well, I'll show you. You sort of split them like this. Do you hear that? So it's that little split that allowing it to split. Obviously, you make sure that you you coincide on the on the middle point. So all the while, my, my mind is thinking in the semiquavers. It's thinking of the eights. 
So I'm going, I'm not thinking of triplets really at all. I'm letting them sort of work, work in, in that agitato style. Obviously, you, you, you can speed up and slow down and feel that kind of rubato effect, which is also, I think, part of the agitato style. Agitato implies rubato. So there's another piece. There's the, um, there's the, the prelude in F sharp minor from the Opus 28 prelude, which has a similar thing. So it's, it's obviously a, a kind of figuration that Chopin probably improvised with. It's something that he, he really en enjoyed, that feeling of, of this agitato, triplets in the left hand, quadruplets in the right hand. And as I say, it creates a very, a very sort of shimmering effect. It's incredibly beautiful, I, I, I think, that when, you, when, it, when, it, when you get it right. But it can be, because it's such a difficult piece kind of on the fingers, it, it, you know, it, 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 you have to get comfortable. So I would really always recommend practicing it slowly. I always recommend practicing slowly, uh, even though I'm not, you know, I rarely sort of choose um, slower tempos for fast pieces like this. Um, I like to, I like to zip through things a little bit, but nevertheless, I always practice slowly and I advocate that. So you're getting that comfortable. I always talk about walking fingers feeling. And this way you, you you build and playing it with, with feeling with with beauty with the phrasing there even though you're playing it slowly with with full rhythm you know I'm all about the groove and about the rhythm so you feel that strong groove one and two and three and four are one and two and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four like a poem isn't it one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and and this is how groove works so you making sure that you play from the body with groove nice comfortable walking fingers and you're feeding that rhythm in so it's almost like but it becomes just sort of split them and because it goes quite quickly and it's got this rubato agitato feeling it doesn't need to be a more perfect four against three than that even when I'm teaching the four against threes in that way I showed you at the beginning I, you still think of them either as, as as having as the main groove having four or having three I don't really find it's possible to hold two rhythms in your mind at the same time you can switch between them you can go from you know from one to the other or even quite quickly and it's amazing how the body maybe maybe the body can do both at once I don't know but the, the the mind can't that's the point so you could you could do that thing that I'm never a big advocate of and just let go and just play from the body and just oh, play it naturally and that, that that might work for some people but I like to have a little bit more clarity in my mind than that and so that's why I think of this in fours and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and And I weave the left hand around it. So that's how I that's how I teach, that's how I practice that particular figuration. Um, the key, I think, to any kind of any kind of success when you're playing something that, that feels complicated is to demystify it. You know, try not to be intimidated or feel that there's something, something sort of super, superhuman that you're supposed to do. Just get it nice and solid 
and then play it with feeling, play it with, really feel it and really feel the beauty. The way that it swirls and kind of the way that we, this kind of feeling of this agitated feeling and the swirling feeling, I think it's brilliant. It's really, it really works in this piece. <laughs> There is this legend that Chopin wanted to, to burn it and all this stuff. Maybe he found it difficult and didn't really enjoy the fact that everybody always asked for it. This this happens with pieces, doesn't it, where um, where maybe maybe he played it to his friends. It wasn't published, I don't think, until after his he, his death, but but maybe he played it to his friends or his students all wanted to learn it or something. Who, who knows why he was fed up with this piece? But I think it is a beautiful piece. I, I still remember the first time I heard it and first time I saw the score and thinking, oh my goodness, that is so difficult. So yeah, I think my job is to sort of demystify some of that um, for myself and for my students so that these pieces that become so iconic and are considered difficult uh, are within our grasp. <laughs>